Good evening. Leading our news tonight, police are investigating an alleged assault on a Namukul resident by an expatriate businessman. Police said charges could be laid. According to Niue Police, the matter is still under investigation and they cannot speculate further as to what will happen to the businessman. However, Chief of Police Mark Chenry confirmed that the matter is expected to wrap up next week. The assault took place in the Mkulu village on Monday and the victim laid a complaint with new police regarding the incident. We will bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. The second reading of the Appropriation Annual Bill for 2011 and the Assembly Draft Estimates of Expenditure and revenue ending in June 2012 will be presented by Honourable Premier Tokita Langi next week in the House of Assembly. The Public Expenditure Committee will also have a chance to table their findings on the budget estimates for 2011 to 2012 term of reference before committal stage and the third reading. Also in the agenda is the Constitution Review from the Constitution Review Committee term of reference for 2011 to 2014. These will take place before the annual report for consideration. Firstly, of the report of the Controller and Auditor General of the Audit of Financial Statements of the Government of Niue for the year ended 30th of June 2007 and the year ended 30th June 2008. The annual report from the new Bulkfield Department for 2009 to 2010 will also be tabled. This will be the first expanded discussions in the House of Assembly by the new government and opposition of the budget. Radio Sunshine will bring you extended live coverage of this meeting starting on Monday next week. It is expected the Legislative Assembly meeting will take place for three days. Changing the mindsets of young people towards alcohol consumption and its effects has prompted yet another training workshop. Micah Fuhinu, one of our YES program students, brings you more on this story. The two-day youth and alcohol workshop held from the 19th to the 20th of July was held at the Newey High School Hall, facilitated by the Newey Health Department as well as the Newey Police Department, with support from the Newey Youth Council, NTDC, Community Affairs and the National Council of Churches. The focus of the workshop was on underage drinking, with the theme, Set Your Minds on Things Above Alcohol. The workshop consisted of talks on the history of youth and alcohol in Niue, as well as general information about the effects of alcohol on the body, both long and short term. Reduce the practice of underage drinking among the youth of Niue, and also try and increase our awareness to the youth here today, and also for us to go out and speak to the rest of the youth around the island. It's not just a problem amongst the youth. We don't want to just say, look, it's the youth, we have to do this because you guys are the trouble. It's a problem around the whole country. It's just become so accessible and available everywhere now. So for this to work, we need the help and the support from the parents, the community, the leaders of Niwe. So that's all I ask. Please help us with this. We have so many underage drinkers. And that um, I think it's just the way that how teenagers find fun I think it's like they think that they're left out and they, they just want to take alcohol to you know feel and taste but it's the matter that we don't have to take alcohol and find those there's other ways we can we can fix the problem into rather than drinking alcohol and you know and doing all this crazy and it's what it's, it's just the way you drink it it's mainly some they abuse it bring uh, grief to our family uh, family issues like we have arguments with our parents and then kids end up in other people's homes. And um, when we consume alcohol, the sickness that we get, like you see that baby, our, when we don't, when we're pregnant, our mothers, when they drink alcohol, our babies will come out normal. They would come out deformed. And it's like, it's like sad watching those things happen. Like it's something that we can learn from. Where to from here for this campaign? Hmm. Um, I think... After this, we still want to target the, the school children. So we'll be coming and talking to the individual years, year one to year 13, and also go out to the villages and speak to all the youth. Mem- youth. Although not many youth members attended the workshop, it was a great success. And we look forward to many more workshops such as these later on in the future. 
And Niue welcomed one of its very own stand-up comedians this week. Irene Pink is on the island with a film crew as part of a comedy series for TV3 named Funny Roots, a show that follows the journey of 10 different comedians tracing their roots, returning to where their parents are from to gauge whether their humour actually derives from their funny roots, whether they're in New Zealand or abroad. Miss Pink hails from the village of Mutalo and has spent time mixing and mingling with her people. We caught up with her today to find out how her first trip to Niue has been and whether her humour sparks from her Niuean origins. Niue is a really special place, immediately, immediately. And um, I've just had such a great time here and met so many people and um, I met a lot of extended family that I haven't met before and made a lot of new friends, which is great. So I've had a fantastic time. So what was... The... We've been going to different things and seeing all different performances and you know, just seeing if I relate to my new Ayan side. And I have to say that there's no doubt in my mind that um, being new Ayan is what makes me perform because everybody performs here, everyone. Little kids, old ladies, everyone. And everyone's really funny as well, much funnier than me. Whilst on the island, Irene has been to many events drawing from those experiences to deliver a short spiel at the Pacific Way Bar, which was interesting and challenging at the same time. The challenge for me was about writing material that uh, wasn't blue, I suppose. Um, in New Zealand, my material tends to be about, uh, you know, I swear more and <laughs> I talk more about adult themes. Um, and so I just wanted to... In, in, in New Way, it's a, it's a different audience. I'm sure that people laugh at the same things, but I also wanted to be um, just a bit respectful of, of where I was and my audience, you know. So I tended to write about things I've done and seen here as well. People laugh wherever, you know, in the world. It doesn't matter where you go. Uh, as long as something is amusing to someone, they're going to laugh. I think it's, it was sort of probably unusual for one person to do a show because normally shows are done in groups. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't long either. But people laughed last night and the response I've had from everyone I've talked to or everyone that we've shoved a camera in their face <laughs> on the island has been really good. Um, New Orleans are very friendly, open people, you know, they, they, and they always want to help as well. So it's been pretty easy, I'd say. Irene says stand-up comedy as an individual and also as a female entertainer has its challenges, but the profession is something that she happened to stumble upon naturally. There's probably about as many uh, Polynesian comedians as there are um, female comedians, but there's it's a different um, it's a different comedy as well for Polynesian groups in Auckland. It tends to be like the Killer Coconut Crew and the Laughing Samoans and um, the Naked Samoans as well. We tend to to, to um, it us, it, it's mainly guys and it usually is in groups because it's they it's a different type of humour I suppose. Uh, Stand-up, because you're on your own, is quite unusual. So, But there are still uh, definitely some uh, stand-ups in Auckland, like we've got it, and some young ones coming through as well. Uh, yeah, so not many, but definitely it, it's becoming more common. Advice for those who have a knack for making people laugh is to challenge yourselves and take up stand-up comedy. Irene will be departing the island tomorrow, but hopes to return with her family someday. This year's Village Sports Day proved a little different, firstly because it was held on a working day, as well as new technical equipment and officers introduced to assist with different events using a photo finish system. The day started off with the March Pass with most teams made up of school children. It was a numbers game with defending marching champions Hakupu Atua continuing their winning performance from 2009. Our Yes program student reporter Sola Ikiwa brings you more on the story. This year's Village Sports Day proved a little different, firstly because it was held on a working day as well as new technical equipment and officers introduced to insist with different events using a photo finish system. The day started off with the march pass with the te most teams made up of school children. Eleven teams registered and participated even with a few villagers having a couple of runners. Even more surprising is that results for second and third, with Tamako Tonga taking out second place and Alofi equaling with Toy in third. The beginning of the day proved a little confusing for some who had to adjust to the proper methods of recording runners and timing, but as, 
as the day progressed, teams actually took time to adjust and enjoy the day. Even with rain arrivals, couldn't stop the sports day with more events taking place right up till 3.30 in the, in the afternoon. Whether your timing is the best or not, it all came down to team effort. The standings of all village teams for 2011, Alofi took first place, Tamakotonga second and Hakupu were third, followed by Avesele, Lakepa, Liku, Tuapa, Toi, Mutalo, Vaya and Makefu following behind. And that story was brought to you by our Yes Program students, Micah Fuhinu and Sola Ikiwa. Now those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin next week. We also hope that you have an enjoyable weekend.